Dreallday.com. What up, everybody? Dre Baldwin, Dreallday.com. People ask me, how do you balance practicing, working on your game, and actually playing in games like a one-on-one, -on -one, three-on-three, five-on-five? You know, playing for your team, playing pickup basketball, and all that. How do you balance the two? Well, first of all, let me tell you how I balance. As far as practice to games ratio, my practice to game ratio is at least, at least 20 to 1, which means for every one hour I spend playing in a game, because a game only takes like an hour, right? If you're playing in a game, in a league, and it's two 20-minute halves, or four 10-minute quarters, or four 12-minute quarters, or whatever, it's about an hour of basketball. If you go play pickup somewhere, maybe you'll play for three hours. It don't even matter. For every one hour I spend playing against anybody, I'm spending 20 hours practicing, doing drills, whether that be ball handling drills, shooting drills, working on moves, maybe doing shooting with another person. I might have another person with me, but we're not playing one-on-one. -on -one. We're doing drills. Like, I'll shoot, then you shoot, or I'll work on this one dribble pull-up. You want to work on your post moves, whatever it is that somebody wants to work on, and all sort of off-the-court stuff. So my practice to play ratio is at least 20 to 1 and I would say that for the majority of you players if you want to get better at performing in games yes you do need the game experience you do need to play in the game so you can get the experience and learn how to use your instinctive skills but from what I see from the basketball that I watch for the most part when I'm talking about players who are up and coming let's say age 25 and under a lot of you players a lot of players lack skill. A lot of players don't have basic skills. They're not deft. They're not deft at handling the ball with both hands equally well. A lot of players can't finish around the basket with both hands equally well. Players are not good at making wide open jump shots. A lot of players can't create their own shot off three or fewer dribbles in a half court set. Players a lot of players are not capable of grabbing a rebound and dribbling the ball coast to coast around some defense and finishing at the basket with either hand. A player is not capable of making a simple post-entry pass. Players can't get around the screen without losing the ball on the handle, make a pass out of the pick and roll. It's like, those are all basic skills. Everything that I just mentioned, like you should be able to, all you players out there, if you're trying to figure out what your ratio should be as far as how much you practice compared to how much you play, you must be able to do all the things that I just mentioned. You have to be able to dribble the ball with both hands equally well. I don't care if you're right-handed or left-handed. Neither one of your hands should be way better than the other one when it comes to handling the ball. They should be pretty equal. Nobody you play against should say, yo, send him to his right or yo, send him to his left because he's way better going that way. If you can cross over from left to right, you got to be able to cross over from right to left just as well. You can't, it can't be a seesaw like where one side is way better than the other. So you need to be able to do everything with both hands equally. The only exception being shooting jump shots. If you're shooting from like outside of seven to eight feet from the basket and you're right handed, then you can shoot with your right hand. Shooting jump shots with both your right hand and left hand, as far as I know, I don't see any advantages to that. I've never seen a player doing it on a regular basis. Yes, maybe some player could shoot a J with his left hand and make it in his YouTube video, and I guess you're impressed by that if you haven't watched a lot of basketball. But no player is doing that on a consistent basis in a game, and there's no, as far as I know, any real advantage to being able to shoot with both hands in a game situation because I've never seen anybody do it. The other things is you have to be able to finish in the basket area with both hands equally well. Now, I know there are some exceptions. There are some players who don't really do that. Allen Iverson was a guy, for example, who hardly ever used his left hand around the basket. Well, guess what? None of us is Allen Iverson. So you, since you're not Allen Iverson, you're whatever your name is, you need, you need to be able to finish with both hands around the basket. You should be able to make simple post-entry passes. And that's something that you kind of get from game experience because you need players around you to throw a pass. Jump shots. All of you players need to be able to make a wide-open jump shot. I remember about a year ago, I was in the gym working out. And I went to the gym like at a time that I don't normally go to the gym. 
And when I was in there working out, this kid came up on the court and he was like, he knew who I was. He was like, Dre all day. I was like, what's up? He was like, yo, let's play one-on-one. And I didn't really want to play in one-on-one, but I'm like, all right, let's play one-on-one. So we get to playing one-on-one and I'm shooting jump shots. And my shot wasn't really going in because I actually hadn't, I think I had been out of the gym for like three or four days at that point when I got into the gym that day, which is why I was in there. I was just shooting. So I was like, I got to get my, my shot back to where it needs to be. And I'm missing my shot. So I stopped shooting jump shots and I just started posting them up. And he was the same size as me, probably weighed a little bit more than me. So I started posting them up and just using my post game and I'm scoring on him. And he's like, oh, well, you're only doing post moves on me. Why are you going to try to win like that? And I'm like, dude, this is part of the game. If you can't stop me, you don't make an excuse that I'm only doing one thing. If one thing is working, I'm going to keep doing the one thing. And I'm playing him when he gets the ball. This kid couldn't make an open jump shot to save his life. Like, I'm just letting him shoot jump shots. He's shooting one dribble pull-ups. He's, like, walking into his shot. Like, no defense. I'm kind of backing off him, letting him shoot the jump shot. And he couldn't make a jump shot to save his life. And he's probably about he's probably about 19. He said he was at some college. He was registered at some school. And I said to him, like, after the game, I said, dude, you're in college. I said, what position do you play? He said, I play shooting guard. And I said, there's no way you're a shooting guard if you can't make an open jump shot. Now, when you're playing on your team at your school, whatever team you play for, like you said, he said he was redshirting. So I'm like, all right, next year when you go out for that team, if you can't make an open jump shot, you're not playing shooting guard. You'll be playing probably power forward or something at your size, depending on the size the size of the players around you. There's no way you're getting in the game as a shooting guard. You can't make a wide open jump shot. And he wasn't no super dynamic drive to the basket guy either. His ball handling skills were not above average. So there's no way you're a shooting guard, kid. You might think you're a shooting guard. You could say you're anything you want to say. I get players come to me all the time. Like, Very rarely do I hear a player tell me he's a power forward or center. If you ask around any players that you meet, almost everybody you meet is going to say, I'm a point guard, shooting guard, small forward. Every player says that. I remember like maybe, what year was this? Probably about 2009, maybe about six years ago, I was working out with my dude. One of my dudes who plays overseas. I was—I don't know if he still plays. He might have retired. I was working out with him, and he had one of his friends in the gym with us working out. So the three of us is working out, and his friend who was working out with us, he was about 6'6", kind of heavy set. He wasn't really in shape. And I was asking him, like, because he was in school. I said, where you go to school? He told me what school you went to. I said, what position you put? And he was like, shooting guard. And we get to working out like this guy was not a shooting guard. I mean, he wasn't bad at making jump shots, but because of his size and his lack of being in shape, I'm like, there's no way, because me and the guy I'm working out with, we both was guards. I was like, there's no way he could guard either one of us in a game, in a five-on-five game. He doesn't have the physical capabilities. He doesn't have the foot speed. He can't move quick enough. He's not going to be able to create his own shot off the dribble or none of that to play that position. He's more like a small forward, kind of like a tweener at the small forward position. He's like a wing guy. He's not a shooting guard. And the reason I say all that is to say this. You players have to develop your skill. Developing your skill is just as important, if not more important, than playing in games. Because when you're playing in games, if you're playing against people who are not better than you, like clearly better than you, then it's not going to make you any better. What it's going to do is keep you at the level that you're at. It'll keep you, like your conditioning will stay up because you're playing in these five on five games if you actually playing like you're running back and forth every time on offense you're running down on defense every time you're not taking plays off because we know in pickup games a lot of times if somebody misses a shot sometimes we'll take a play off because there's no penalty for taking a play off there's no coach or anything like that you have to make sure that you develop your skill level so unless you're playing with people who are clearly a better than you that you could walk in and say you know what more than half of the guys in here are better than me if you can't say that you better off working on your game you better off spending that time working on your skill develop your ball handling be able to finish with both hands be able to make an open jump shot most of the players that i meet who are under the age of 22 let's say can't i can't check all three boxes for most of the players i meet who come under that and they tell me that they're shooting guards or they're point guards or they're going to go play here or they want to play overseas. Like, dude, you can't even make an open jump shot. How are you going to be a shooting guard in the pros? That's not possible. I mean, you could try, but once the coach sees you can't make an open jump shot, you ain't going to get in the game. You ain't even going to be on the team. Forget getting in the game. You ain't going to get a uniform. College either. You have to be able to have the skills. Making an open jump shot is something you can practice by yourself. 
ball handling and finishing are things that you can practice by yourself. And players ask, you know, how much time should I spend practicing? How much time should I spend playing? Because players like, you know, when I get in the game, I can't do my moves. It's not necessarily about moves. Can you make an open jump shot in the game? Can you make a one dribble pull up in a game? Can you make a left hand layup and a right hand layup from either side of the rim in a game? Can you handle the ball from baseline to baseline with somebody playing defense without turning the ball over in a game? If you can check all those things off, then you start working on the moves. Then you find players who are better than you to play against. If you can't find anybody who's better than you, then you're better off working on your skill. Add more skill to your game. Spend less time playing with players who are at the same level as you. So if the players you're playing with are at the same level as you, then you need to stop playing with them. Because all they're going to do is keep you exactly where you are. Now, Tony Robbins talks about you, your life is going to be a direct reflection. We'll say basketball. Your game is going to be a direct reflection of the expectations of the people you're playing with most. So if you're playing with people who are at about the level that you're at, then you're pretty much going to stay right there. If you're playing with people who are worse than you, then you're going to pretty much stay where you're at. Like You'll be satisfied with being better than them because you are better than all those guys. You have no impetus to get better because you're playing with dudes who are worse than you. If you're playing with dudes who are better than you, then you have no choice but to raise your game. Because otherwise, you're going to be getting embarrassed. You're going to get beat. And eventually, they might stop inviting you to the game because they're like, this dude's a bump. He's not useful. He's like a liability. Whatever team he's on, he's the weak link. We can't have him in the gym. He's making the whole game worse. So you got to find players who are better than you. And if you can't find them, work on your skill. Develop your skill so that when you get around those guys, you actually have something to bring to the table. I hope that answers the question for a lot of you players who've been asking me that. How much time should you spend working on your game? How much time working on your skill? That ratio should be extremely high. Extremely high. It should be at least 10 to 1. For every game you play in, you should be spending 10 hours practicing. If you got a game every day in the summertime, guess what? You need to be working out every day. If you had a game at night and you got home at like 1030, you'd be, you need to be in the gym the next day and get a workout in in addition to the game that you got the next day. I don't know how you're going to do that. You got to get up earlier, an hour earlier, go to bed an hour later. I don't know what your situation is, but you need to figure it out. If you want to be a serious basketball player, that means you want to play in college, you want to play in the pros, then you need to put in more time practicing than you spend playing, period, point blank. Now, if you want to be on Instagram doing dribbling around chairs and cones, or you want to make YouTube videos like this is the Kyrie Irving, then you do whatever you want. I have no conversation for you there. But if you want to be a respected, real basketball player, then you got to put in way more practice time than you putting in playing time. Period. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com. Video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here and make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day. Work on your game.